PBS and I, we went and saw Long Legs yesterday, and it's got our our girl Micah Monroe in it. Micah Monroe, God, she's she's such a babe, really is. She, I mean, she's just so gorgeous. You know, uh, the movie's been successful already, and they've already greenlit a sequel. Oh yeah, called Short Arms, starring Rob Zilla. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for something had stupid to, to come out of that. No, but this has, um, it's already, it's still opening weekend, I believe, and it's already made like 20 million on a $10 million budget. Oh, yeah. See, so, Artha Theater, we went to, what, what would you say, medium sized theater? It, Maybe a little on the smaller side. It's not, it's not their smallest theater, but it's, yeah, it was, it was not their biggest. Or I would say medium size. And it was, I mean, it's pretty packed. There's a couple empty seats near us, but I think that was about yeah. it. Yeah. And that's, uh, I, people at movie people I follow on Twitter and, and elsewhere, they've all kind of said the same thing. Like, I went to get tickets or I, I showed up at the theater and it sold out or it was a lot more full than I th thought it would be. And considering, um, what this movie is about, I'm, I'm a little surprised that it's so full. Myself. Yeah, I don't. Um, I think people are just they're curious. craving a good scary movie. Curious. Yeah, and you know I don't. Um, and let's face it, Neon does a really great job of advertising their movies and and building hype around it. I mean, this they, one, they're, they they're up there with like A two four. They got yeah. like that name recognition. So when yeah. you you see that sometimes that's just enough to get you interested in. I believe they said this is. Uh, going to be like i think the the best opening for a neon production yep. oh it definitely has to yeah. be yeah 20 million but so i mean here's a synopsis for it for those of you that haven't seen it but in pursuit of a serial killer an fbi agent which is micah monroe uh uncovers a series of occult clues that she must solve to end his terrifying killing spree and um this is definitely so i should we just say like it's about uh somebody who worships the devil yeah i mean essentially yeah. essentially it's a serial like i said it's a serial killer movie with a cult overtone yeah yeah it's definitely i mean the first time you see nicholas cage yeah. on screen you're like holy shit that is a creepy looking motherfucker. looks like i put on my long legs today yeah hmm. and you'll never want happy birthday sing yeah. sung to you ever again after seeing this movie but <laughs> uh, really good acting. I mean, at first I was kind of like, why, you know, like I didn't think Micah Monroe really felt like a FBI agent at the beginning. Like something just seemed off. I, I almost felt like she didn't have the chops to pull, you know, a, a strong female lead off, um, you know, because she's used to be in the teenage girl that is helpless or whatever. So this was definitely something that kind of, uh, put her in a, another level of her acting. I'll say that this was a challenge for, her, and I'm, I'm kind of interested to see how she picks some of her roles. I'm uh, <laughs> they, they never really explain. They don't go into her backstory so much about like why she became an FBI agent. And that like the, the daughter of one of the other agents kind of asks her at some point. Yeah. But she never really quite gets into it. And like you say, she's kind of like disassociated from it. She's like a, a savant. Yeah. It's, well, she's uh, got, she's, obviously sort of got telepathic yeah she's got some thing. sort of you know hunch on guessing things and stuff like that but uh, yeah you kind of as the the movie moves along you kind of understand the character just a little bit more and you overlook some of you know things that you might expect her to do as far as acting in this role that she's not doing but uh she did a good job at the end i thought i mean it really paid off how they they wrote the character and how she executed it eventually but uh, yeah, very suspenseful. Uh, this is definitely worth the price of your admission. <laughs> Go watch it in the theaters. Get creeped out, and uh, you know it, it didn't have a disappointing ending. I didn't think it. Um, I do think they explain a little too much by the end. <laughs> it would have been they could have they could have pulled it back just a little bit and maybe not explain. They pretty much explain everything in a way, but I I think they could have pulled that back just a little bit. Mm -hmm. It, not it, necessarily left some not left some questions lingering, but could have let you figure it out just a little bit more on your own. It's funny because it's a serial killer movie, obviously, but there's tones of supernatural, right? Uh, you know, towards the end of the movie, I guess you could say, middle to end of the movie. But yeah, it's definitely good, and I, you know, I didn't necessarily see that twist at the end. I mean, mm -hmm. I I kind of figured something was up, but I didn't expect it to be like full on the way it was. Right. So, and man. 
Nicholas Cage just shows off those acting chops, doesn't he? I almost um his I, I've heard people mix. Some people really liked it, some people not so much. I almost wish I didn't know it was him. Because I don't you really couldn't tell if you didn't know no. it was him. He's got just enough makeup on. It's not like distracting, but you could you couldn't tell who it was under he, there. He almost looks like a pale Neanderthal. Right. <laughs> I mean, the way they put makeup and made his like I don't forehead bone like mm. really big like his skull was like sticking out in parts it was weird so, like a picture I saw you look like a albino almost. yeah yeah pretty much don't be looking up pictures Rob but, yeah don't spoil it for yourself no I saw some on TikTok and I had to take it off real quick that was one thing that I like that they did in the movie like you never saw his face in the trailers yeah. really they just kind of showed you enough to make you interested it, well yeah. they just did like a little like clips yeah like spy saying clips, but even really got even then the, like his silhouette was mm -hmm. you know dimmed so you yeah. couldn't see him 100 right but i'm telling you when they show him on screen it hits you and you're yeah. like what am i in store for here you know <laughs> like this is getting crazy but and the way that these murders happen adds to the mystery of the movie because mm -hmm. there's no fingerprints no sign of entry i mean these the families are just killing themselves so that makes it really interesting and you get to see the them solving the puzzle essentially but uh definitely a great you know i can't think of too many i mean obviously seven and i mean it's a couple very, of others it's very um and i think even uh the director osgood perkins even kind of said it's very much referencing like silence of the lambs yeah in a way because that's such a popular movie so when you see some of this you kind of understand the world you're in yeah in a way with the fbi and all that and that's inspired really, yeah and really like well when we were watching it, that was my thoughts were kind of like this is kind of like science of the lambs meets kind of the first season of true detective in a way yeah not you know king and yellow kind of the, stuff but the thing that gave me the most anxiety in the movie was micah monroe's breathing <laughs> like she's the, there's scenes where she's getting like uh, she has an intruder in the house and she's like grabs her gun and all of a sudden you see her out in the yard and she's like, <sighs> 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 and like every every scene she gets into when there's something serious going on she's like breathing really heavy like a panic it, attack from and they do such a good job of you just hearing her breath like i mean that was going through the speakers really loud and i was like jesus christ <laughs> like she is just all over the place with this and it was free, like giving me anxiety i was like oh god i hope she doesn't get fucked up here yeah this was uh just a really well-made movie it's one of those ones yeah. where like you're talking about her going home and like there's always a little bit of the frame like looking at an open right doorway right into another room it's like they give you clues through the side of the lens so even if you're <laughs> even if you're not expecting something you're at least looking at it because you're you know you're your eyes drawn like is something yeah. gonna happen in that other room or not you're definitely looking at everything and you're like oh man and you know i like uh, you know i like my serial killer movies don't we all mm -hmm. that you know that the, the thrill of the chase and it is a little different when they really get into it we don't want to go any spoilers because it just came out but it's just uh, I, I was really into it it's um a lot of people like you kind of mentioned the marketing and i get you know it's one of those it's the new the scariest movie ever and it's definitely mm -hmm. not the scariest movie or I don't know what the scariest movie ever is, but it is, it is a dreadful movie. There is like yeah. the whole, the, like almost the whole movie. It's kind of a slow burn. It's not like, it's not like, it's not like a thriller. You know what I mean? And there wasn't anything particularly like gory about it. Like, I mean, no, no. you see some things, but you don't see it exactly. Right, right. So you just, you know, some things are happening, but they're happening off camera. So, but it was and just that, that very deliberate, pace yeah just kind of makes and you're always waiting it had that. a great pace so like even when they were kind of staying a little bit too long on certain situations they cut right into another uh act and you're just kind of like okay let's keep it going here and they did a good job with that yeah, it, it was it, it had a nice structure yeah and like i say it's just slow enough to be sort of dreadful and ominous yeah and you're just you're almost waiting like every scene for something kind of crazy to happen. Yeah. And, I, I really enjoyed it though. Uh, I don't know what you gave it, but I only gave it a three, five so far. I gave it four stars. I'm I want to revisit this one. If not in the theater, at least when it comes out, I'm going to watch it. It's like I said, I almost, I almost don't want to watch it. 
Like I, I, was, I definitely want to sit and think about it a little was, bit more before I have a rewatch, but I don't think I'll go back to the theater and I see was, it. I was thinking to myself, like, man, this, this movie is kind of evil. It really yeah. does feel it. Like, yeah, it is. It, it does have an evil tone to it. I want to, I want to let that go for a while. Come back to it. But I think, you know, most of the people that obviously listen to us or we engage in conversations with outside of the show, I think that most people will enjoy it. Oh, yeah. And I think they'll probably have a similar thought to us. I don't know if they'll enjoy it as much as I did. Like but said, I'm looking around at the people in the movie theater, like, you know, we're we're movie people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always I, I look to you guys sometimes as like the normal movie viewer, even though you pay more attention to movies than the normal person does. Yeah, I would say that's fair. But I even even looking at a theater, like you said, like I'm assuming these people were there because they saw the marketing they heard good word of mouth and this movie definitely does get a little strange yeah and so it's kind of odd to see like a a pretty packed theater watching this strange serial killer movie and i almost i almost wanted to ask some of the people like what did you think you were getting into was did you think that was it yeah you know so, yeah so i'm curious to see how uh how the reactions go i think it's going to get good reactions i think it's going to keep making money so it's already up to 20 million it's already beat its budget the director's already got like his next two movies lined up so yeah and uh you know this is a 3.7 average score on letterbox so you know it's above average you're going to be highly entertained when you see that so i'll be curious to see if it's got some legs at the box office <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i'm definitely recommending that though go to the theater and watch it you will have fun with all the lights turned out <laughs> As long I can as see an interview with the director that everything written in the script that for Nicolas Cage that he wrote was what Nicolas Cage did. He didn't change or ad lib. He said he wanted to keep everything to the script because how much he enjoyed it. Because he told, I guess he told Nicolas, he's like, you can do whatever you want because it's Nicolas Cage. He's like, nope. Paid for Nicolas Cage. I want yeah, Nicolas Cage. Exactly. The, the director, I think in that same interview, he talked about, because somebody asked him about the Ty West movies. And he made it sound like he was kind of forced to watch X. And he's like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to watch Pearl and I don't want to watch Maxine. He's like, oh, okay. Good. I'm glad he didn't. He made a great fucking movie. His, uh, Unlike Pearl and Maxine. His, I, I don't know if it was his most recent movie before that or not. I don't think he made, he made like one of the Hansel and Gretel's too. But he made a movie called The Black Coat's Daughter. I've heard of that. Which I need to, I need to revisit. I, it was, I watched it one night and it's another one that's a little kind of slow. And I maybe wasn't quite in the mood for it. So I need to I need to rewatch that and see how that one goes again. That's I'm I'm curious to go back to that one. And I'm curious he's supposed to be doing like a Stephen King adaptation for Neon, and he's supposed to be working on like an original movie for Neon. So after after this, I think he's gonna be like, yeah, whatever you want to do. Yep. Sounds like Neon's got a mock down at least. Here's some money.